Today is November the 22nd, and today is the 50th anniversary of the JFK assassination. This day means a lot to me because my birthday is November the 14th, and I remember where I was at when we got the news that Kennedy had been assassinated. I was in school, and they let the school out early so we could all go home. People were so upset that they just dismissed school early, very early. Uh, so we were all allowed to go home, and um, I remember about a week later, of course, it was almost Thanksgiving time, and I was sitting in the living room working on a model of a 32 Ford that I had gotten for my birthday, had the TV on, and the next thing I knew, Oswald was murdered on TV. And uh, I don't know how many of you think about this or contemplate it or if you even thought about it or even if you care. I know a lot of people that are not my age that are probably 40 and under probably don't give it too much thought at all. And uh, those of us who are older that have lived through this time give it a pretty good bit of thought. Uh, but I don't know if you know anything about Oswald, but uh, watch this short clip. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about Mr. Oswald. We call him the lone nut. <laughs> but here's a man who worked at a CIA base, who had his records altered by the military, who defected to Russia when he had no money. He takes a plane when no planes are available to get into Russia. He marries the niece of a high-ranking Soviet official. An intelligence uh, and, officer, right? That's right, and connected to intelligence. Slips across the Iron Curtain without leaving a trace. Threatens espionage while he's there and is not arrested lives in a community infiltrated by intelligence agents. He's befriended by a former spy, is seen in close contact with at least two intelligence agents. That's back after he came back or in the Soviet Union? And after he came back. Mm -hmm. He makes travel arrangements in the company of an employee of the CIA after he's gotten, uh, or before he went over there. He uses an alias, maybe several. He keeps an office in a building with other agents. He eludes detection by surveillance devices, some way or another. He gets a passport when sh one should have been denied. Okay, a second passport. Also very, very quickly through the State Department. That's right. Uh -huh. And is finally shot down in a room crowded with police by a former informer for the nation's chief investigative agency, the FBI. The first in a two-part series on an update on the Kennedy assassination with Gary Shaw, the author of Cover Up, right now on... Well, as you can see, uh, Oswald was not the so-called lone nut that everybody keeps calling him. Uh, when he was arrested that day and taken into the Dallas police station, he had in his possession a spy camera that cost over $1,000 back then. Uh, that was a heck of a lot of money in 1962, as well as other spy equipment that only the CIA used. Now, where did he get this equipment, and what was he doing with it? The whole point, I don't know if you ever asked yourself, why did he go to the theater in Dallas right after the so-called... Uh, I mean, right after the shooting of JFK, why did he go to the movie theater? The answer to that question is he was supposed to meet somebody there that was supposed to pick him up, is what he was told. And reality was, if he had escaped the uh, Dallas Book Depository alive, he was going to be executed there by Hitman. 
the same hit man that shot J.D. Tippett that two witnesses seen shoot J.D. Tippett. It was not Oswald who shot him. It was a hit man. And he was assassinated on the street. And one witness who seen the shooting grabbed Tippett's gun and ran after him. And they couldn't catch him, but he said that as he seen him getting away, he stopped, turned around, and looked at him and raised the pistol up toward him and then decided not to shoot him and just ran away. Okay, if he ran away, he couldn't have been Oswald because Oswald was in the book, I mean, the, the movie theater. There's a lot of questions to this that has never been answered and maybe never will be answered, but one thing's for certain, what we've been told over and over again by various news organizations is a flat out lie and they do not like to be told they're wrong. Once they have an idea and have been told something, they're going to stick by it come hell or high water. It's the way it is. Anyway, that's my thoughts for today. What's your thoughts on the JFK assassination? What do you think? Am I crazy? Look at all the evidence. Look at the various files on YouTube. Look at all these books that's came out. And tonight on the History Channel, there'll be a new program on the JFK shooting. So let me know what you think. All right, y'all have a good day. See you later. Bye.